hop into OAuth, web server flow explained with another beer garden analogy. Welcome to another video in the Securing Identity series. In a past video, I explained high level OAuth using a beer garden analogy. Today, we're gonna to dive deeper and we're gonna tackle one of the more complicated OAuth flows, web server flow, and I'm gonna continue and build on my previous analogy while giving you actual details of the flow. In a previous video, I talked about being at a beer garden and then having my, wanting to be able to get some beer. But by doing that, I would, tried to go to the resource server and they said, you don't have a wrist bracelet, an access token. And so using my little secure you know, robot, which is the client, I was then directed to the authentication server where I gave it my credentials. And then from there, the authentication server um, validated the credentials and then provided me with a wrist bracelet and access token. That goes back to me on a secure channel. And then from there, um, I then go back to the resource server, present the resource server with my access token and I get the requested data. Now we're gonna move on to a more intricate use case. And now to continue the example, I'm actually not going to the beer garden directly. I'm going to a third party, the burger house. Now they don't have beer and they're going to get the beer through the beer garden, but they need to be able to get to it with my credentials. And I'm interfacing through what's called a front end channel, which is a little less secure than a direct channel, the, the back end channel. So the front end channel is in red, the back end channel is in black. And so we need to treat the level of security a little differently. So I go to the burger house and I request some secure data, the beer. Now what's happening, so this is up here at the top right. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna be redirected to the public website for the authentication server. So again, going over the red represents the front end channel, which is slightly less secure. Um, I'm gonna then be directed to the login screen. So I'm gonna be popped into the login screen of Salesforce with a redirect. And from there, I'm gonna type in, you know, and authenticate into Salesforce. Now Salesforce, knowing that this is a front end channel and not as secure, will give this little token. It's called an auth code. It's a little coin I'm demonstrating with a blue, blue coin. And that will come back to me through the, the web, the front end channel. And then what my browser will do is I will put, send that coin, that auth code, back to the burger house. So the burger house um, now has received my coin. It's my blue coin. And what it will do is it will go to the authentication server, the beer garden guard, and it'll present that blue coin on my behalf. And so the burger house will present on, and, and this is on a black secure channel. So this is a direct secure channel between the burger house and the authentication server. And what it'll get back is it can get back up to two things. It can get a wrist bracelet, for, which will get beer on my behalf, and it can get what's called a refresh token on my behalf, which will let it come back later for future access tokens if the wrist bracelets expire. So the Burger House, the third party, sends, authenticates on the authentication server, and then it gets back as part of a successful response it will get back an access token and potentially a refresh token. Now, then the burger house can then, it can store both the access token and the refresh token on us. And, and this is happening through the back end secure channel. It can store those. And then the burger house can then request to the resource server using my access to, no, using an access token generated on my behalf and it can get the requested data. Bring it back to the burger house. The burger house can put it with the meal so it can combine that data and then it'll send it back to the user but blend it in with its own data, put onto its own meal. So this has key elements of this flow is that there is the back end secure channel in black, the front end slightly less secure channel in red 
and you don't want the actual access codes to ever make it to the, to the resource owner, but there is an exchange going through the website for an, a temporary use authentication code, auth code. But that is only used for the exchange and then it's discarded. Now, what we're not also not showing the details is the Burger House has a business license, a special license with the authentication server. So it can verify that this exchange is only coming through the Burger House. Um, so this is called uh, the consumer key, the consumer secret. That allow the burger, the authentication server to know that the burger house is allowed to operate on behalf of other resource owners or people coming in. Kind of think of it as a special business license. So there are multiple steps to this, but what this does is this creates um, a way in which a third party, the burger house, can then get the data for end customers. So this OAuth flow is one of the more intricate. It has a third party, which is trying to get the data. It has the resource owners that want access indirectly through the third party. The, um, the third party, the, 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 the um, burger house has to have a special relationship with the resource server. That's the business license or the consumer key and consumer key secret. And then through this, we have what's called a secure backend channel. That's the black, which is we know is just a point to point connections between the third party, the resource server, the third port party, and the authentication server. But we also have a slightly less secure browser-based relationship with the resource owner. And that's where we'll be doing redirects and passing a one-time use auth code that is that can be passed around in a slightly less secure manner, and it never actually becomes the key, but it's just used as part of the exchange process. So as we think about this, these flows have these levels because they're there to protect against attackers. People might try to intercept the transactions and act on their behalf. People might try to listen and play them back later, getting their own data or beer later. And so I hope this flow helps explain it. And what we'll be doing in subsequent videos is diving deep into the actual nuances and details. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for coming again and tasting more knowledge. Join me on stevetechark.com and Steve Tech Arc YouTube for more videos. Same bad time, same bad channel. Have a great day.